everybody. Welcome on in. We are going to get started shortly, but while we are waiting on people to show up, we would like to do a little icebreaker with y'all. So please tell us where you are coming in from today and uh, we'll be excited to meet you. And actually, while we're getting ready, our amazing guest today, Patrick, is going to show us how to make a lovely drink. Sure. Awesome. Let's see. Oh, we've got some Arkansas, snowy Chicago, Portland, Hello. Chesapeake. Wow, you guys are coming from everywhere. Irvine, Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, that's fun. New Brunswick, Canada. Man, you guys, you guys are coming from everywhere. This is amazing. Well, we're so excited to have you. So I know that we're going to talk a little bit about your product, but while we get going, what, what flavor is this? This is a uh, protein. This one's our cocoa blueberry. Ooh. Yeah, so it's going to have a little bit more of a rich flavor to it. Pretty easy to make. Six ounces of almond milk. Pop a scoop in there. Take it up. Out the door. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's try it first. All right. So it's going to have a little bit of texture, just because we don't use those gums on the nasty stuff they were talking about. All natural, yeah. more of an earthy flavor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, first, cheers. cheers. Yeah. And cheers to all of you out there. I personally think it's delicious. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Yeah. And just so y'all know, there is no less than one gram of sugar in this, yeah. right? Yeah, four net carbs. That's awesome. Mm. Really good morning time. If like you need to get out the door, got a lot of recipes you can do it too. So. Yeah. You often do you like put fruit in it sometimes or depends on how much of a rush I'm in. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I just drink it like that after a workout. Do that. Or smoothies, um, banana, oat milk, peanut butter, you can't go wrong with that. Oh you know. that. That sounds so good. Um, I wish you all could try this because it's really good. Um, so mentally, I'm on an island in the Caribbean, physically in cold Pennsylvania. Mm. Oh, no, Mackenzie, I'm sending you warm thoughts. Ooh, Jennifer is sipping a glass of red with us. That's a good beverage. I like that. <laughs> we are going to uh, we're going to wait just one more minute here and then we will go ahead and get started. Oh, 72 degrees. That's where they nice. at? Yeah, where are you at, Haley? Ooh, Eric's having some shut <laughs> <laughs> Um Chesapeake. Oh, nice. That's really cool. Oh, Brookfield, Wisconsin. Gin and tonic. Everyone's drinking right now. I know. We're just sitting here drinking our <laughs> yeah. protein shakes. Right. <laughs> we should have spiked our protein mm -hmm. shakes. Put some Bailey's in there. Ooh, that would actually taste really good. I'll try when I get home. Probably defeat the purpose, but <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> mm. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yes, Jessica, it is. <laughs> oh, Melissa's in Texas. Hi. Where are you in Texas? Are you near Austin, Melissa? John, I was in Utah. Yes, it is happy hour. <laughs> Oh, near San Antonio. Well, nice. That's that's really cool. Well, welcome from not so far away. We've got some Washington and Kentucky. Um, I think. Oh God. What? Oh no. degrees. Sorry, Arkansas. I'm freezing for you. Yeah. <laughs> they need a gin and tonic too. Yeah. All right. Well. I think that we are gonna go ahead and get started here. So I just wanna officially thank you all for joining us today to our first Ship and Sip of 2022. I am your host, Erin, and I manage ShipStation's community, a place where users like you can network, share tips and tricks, and provide product feedback to us. Um, so this year, we are so excited to kick out uh, <laughs> goodness, kick off our series here in our brand new beautiful headquarters here in Austin. And we hope that soon enough that we'll actually be able to do this in person so we can meet all of you. Today, we are going to talk to Patrick Sheck, who is the founder of Fit People. And before I get started here, I do want to thank our amazing sponsor, Skewvel, for sponsoring today's event. And as a reminder, we are going to be doing a Q&A today. And since all of you guys were so amazing and we had so many registrations and so many great questions, we are going to be asking questions from our registration list. However, if you all still have questions for us, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat 
And if we have time to get to them, we will. And if we don't, we are going to go ahead and within the coming week, make a post on the ShipStation community answering some of your questions. So please feel free to still send us questions and we will get to what we can. We are so excited to kick this off. And um, just so you know, since we are doing QA a little bit differently this time, we are going to be pulling our winner from the attendee list here. So everybody who's here, as long as you're here and in this Zoom, you are eligible to win our lovely giveaway today. So um, let's get started. Hi, Doctor. Hi, I'm good. Yourself? It's actually pretty sunny out. It's not 23, so I'm doing I know. Okay. I think we're doing good. If yeah. that's the standard, it's not 23 degrees. I think we're doing good. I think we were there last week, though. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Fit People. When and uh, how did you found it? The um, initial idea for Fit People was actually uh, way back in 2012. I was working at a startup here uh, in downtown Austin. And the, the kitchen, they had all kinds of food there. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of snacks, uh, lots of junk food, a lot <laughs> of the stuff that uh, I tend to eat when I'm a little more stressed out. <laughs> and so I was continuing to go to the kitchen and I was much on that uh, not so healthy stuff. And mm -hmm. I asked the office manager to bring in a protein powder because mm -hmm. I would, you know, make a lot of those in my, in my right. early twenties. Uh, uh, so I could make some healthier choices in mm -hmm. there. Um, and she just brought in like a very generic brand mm -hmm. um, that didn't really fit what the office space, what I think would uh, align with. I think it was like a big dude in the front flexing. <laughs> like the muscle mouth. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, well this, I mean, I'll drink this because I need something healthy, but like this doesn't really fit with, uh, you know, align with the people in the office. And mm -hmm. my, initial thought was, well, there needs to be something to help busy people stay fit people. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the name originally came from. Mm -hmm. And I was in the tech space. So I shortened it to PPL, popped that together and it was all available. So I just bought the domain and got all the got all name and had the initial idea for it. That's amazing. When, when were you founded? What year did you uh, found this company? So 2015 is when we officially launched. So I had that idea in 2012, mm -hmm. um, sat on it for about a year. And then really got the fire going uh, when I had actually made a trip to Thailand mm -hmm. a year later and saw the plastic pollution firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, I was swimming around the Koh Phi Island and there was literally bottles and all kinds of things just floating. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, what's going on with all this? Did a little right. research and it was coming from the consumer packaged goods space. All oh, that wow. plastic was washing into our rivers and going right out to the ocean. And wow. so that kind of sparked the whole, I had the health aspect mm -hmm. and then the, um, kind of the, I guess, vision for the environmental aspect. And that's where we got better for people, better for the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, went from there. That's that's an amazing mission. And yeah. speaking about it, it's better for people, better for planet. Mm -hmm. How do you source your inventory with better health and also environment in mind? So I wanted to be really intentional mm -hmm. with our mantra that we were using right there. So the better for people in that space, um, in, in the supplements and consumer patch good space, you see the word clean, mm -hmm. um, you know, healthy, all this stuff, but then you look on the label and it's a completely different story. Mm -hmm. So my goal on that was to really be intentional, you know, no gums, no stevia, um, no fillers, mm -hmm. uh, basically nothing shady. Mm -hmm. And I, I really honed in on that and didn't really make any sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for the better for the planet aspect, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, reflected back on my time in Thailand and all the research I've done and the issues that I, I saw with the plastic pollution mm -hmm. and uh, decided to start instead of using the plastic tubs that everyone was using. I was right. like, well, why don't we use like the craft pouches, which is a much lighter mm -hmm. foot imprint or impact in general. Mm -hmm. And then like you saw on the inside, I was really intentional with like even smaller things like our scoop. So we put a palm leaf scoop on the oh, inside. Wow which are made from naturally fallen palm leaf trees. Yeah. So it's completely compostable and biodegradable. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So it's not even a part of like farming and deforestation. It's just using what they literally nature. fall on the ground and then we, we create our scoops out of them. That is amazing. And also I'm sure it's a lot more efficient for shipping purposes as well, because mm -hmm. you don't have that heavy plastic tub. With the, it, it, with the tubs, the amount of space those take up and the pallets is mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. We can get like 10,000, pouches, mm -hmm. you know, in a relatively pretty small box, you get 10,000 mm -hmm. tubs. I mean, that, that's a ton of space. It's just, a, it's just yeah. a ton of waste in general. That's, that's crazy. I mean, that's such a thing that you wouldn't think about, mm -hmm. you know, like the big tubs, how much, you know, not only are they bad for the environment, they're a little bit heavier. They make shipping a little bit more difficult. Oh, yeah. um, 
So uh, my next question here for you is, how long have you been using uh, our sponsor, Skewball, and how have they impacted your business? So when I first started, I had absolutely no experience in this space. I mean, I'm talking zero experience. And so I originally, way back when I first launched, was actually loading packages up on my scooter and going across Congress Bridge and dropping them off at the post office and manually inputting them in the UPS website. Oh, no. It was incredibly inefficient. It was just terrible, uh, but I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the point where I was, I was like, I need to figure out a better solution was when we had our launch in Central Market mm -hmm. and we had to, I had to ship to 10 or 11 stores mm -hmm. and I was doing that myself. And I was like, this is an absolute, absolute nightmare. Oh. And that's when I started Googling solutions for shipping. Mm -hmm. And that's when ShipStation came up, did more research, mm -hmm. saw ShipStation, started using that. And then Skewball came in when I ended up using a drop shipper, which just mm -hmm. made my life so much easier. Mm -hmm. And they, they utilize uh, Skew Vault. And so, I mean, they're just firing. Like I saw them do it when I was up there, just boom, boom, <laughs> everything's barcoded up. Everything's just like tracked easily. It's the dream, right? It made everything incredibly efficient, and way, way easier. And that was like three or f that was like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was introduced to Skew Vault. I had no clue what that was either mm -hmm. until my drop shipper show was going on. And then we plugged it into the website. And I was able to keep up with inventory and everything just on the fly. So that's amazing. it went from incredibly inefficient to efficient doing all that. And when you were doing this, were you, uh, you were just a team of one, right? It yeah. was just you. Are you still a team of one at this point? Or do you have a small team? I have a small team now. Mm -hmm. of, I have people helping in different areas. Um, the goal is to, to actually grow and start getting more full-time people on. I do elicit help and have people helping, uh, you know, different roles, agency, part-time mm -hmm. uh, to help outsource and delegate some of the stuff. Well, speaking of milestones and changes, what are some mile major milestones that you could reflect on for us? Mm. Two of the big ones, honestly, because mm -hmm. I remember how much of a relief it was, is when I uh, streamlined the business mm -hmm. for scalability, when I was able to get the co-packer, uh, co or sorry, the drop shipping situation mm -hmm. figured out, and then start integrating technologies that made my life so much easier mm -hmm. with the skew ball and the ship station. Um, and then the really big milestone for me was uh, when we launched in the whole, so that was a big milestone because mm -hmm. um, that's an incredibly hard retailer to get yeah. into. And it's hard to get into, and it's also hard to thrive on the shelves there too. So uh, pulling pulling that off was like a re really huge milestone mm -hmm. um, as far as for the company. I can only imagine. I mean, that's the dream, getting into Whole Foods. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was great, especially like it's, it's they're kind of the gatekeepers of the space. So if you can get in there, it's it's a big win. Yeah, and I mean, there's Whole Foods pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure if we asked our chat, I'm sure everybody knows what Whole Foods is. Yeah. So that's that's not a small feat that yeah. you accomplished. That's yeah, and we're going to work on nationwide soon. Right now, we're like kind of Southwest region. So mm -hmm. the goal now is to... So if you don't have fit people yet, you will eventually. Or just go run in and, and start hollering at the manager and tell them. Yeah, <laughs> demand it. Go down to your local retailer and start demanding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking on the other side, uh, what challenges have you faced in this e-commerce space and how are you working on overcoming them? There's three main challenges that I had because I, I had uh, no experience in the e-commerce space. So mm -hmm. that was email marketing. Mm -hmm. um, SEO was a nightmare figuring that out. Yeah. And then digital marketing. Um, mm -hmm. That one I'm still struggling with to yeah. figure out that space. <laughs> um, with email marketing, I didn't really understand how important it was to cultivate that email list. Right. I, I mean, honestly, in the first year, I don't think I was even collecting emails. Like I just, yeah, I was, I mean, I was a, a complete rookie in the space. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was able to find a partner, like kind of an agency that handles our emails and mm -hmm. then found an email service that was really geared towards e-commerce, which was a big win. Mm -hmm. um, and then SEO was the same. I battled with that for a long time, trying to find mm -hmm. out how to properly do SEO. And a lot of it I learned on my own, but then finding an agency that could really help with that. The digital marketing one, I'm still struggling with. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that one out as far as like how to scale that and, and, and really make that a home run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to all of our people out here, I think it's important to talk about like, you're doing amazing. You're in full Whole Foods, you're doing all this stuff, but you don't have it all figured out and that's okay. Yeah. I mean, as you go into business, you there are things that you're going to, you know, learn. It's one foot in front of the other. You should <laughs> exactly. do that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, speaking of uh, your brand, mm -hmm. You said before, authenticity is very important to you and your brand. What are some ways that you develop authenticity as a brand? 
I think the, the biggest way we do that, and it's always been important for me to be authentic and everything we do and we mm -hmm. say, um, and I kind of touched on that with the product attributes, but really on the like the environmental front, mm -hmm. a lot being green is a is a is a big buzzword right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, talk, but there's not a lot of walk. Mm -hmm. And so when I was cultivating the brand and what we're going to do, I was like, how do we take this to the next level mm -hmm. and be authentic in what we're doing? And so one way that we do that is like actually walking the walk, which we do with our cleanups. So. Mm -hmm we're a waste neutral company. Mm -hmm. So the weight of anything we create, mm -hmm. we remove in the communities. So like on the back of each bag, we have our litter mm -hmm. uh, abatement score, which tells the customer how much trash we're going to pleasure remove from the weight of the, the finished product. That's so amazing. And so we actually go out and get our hands dirty mm -hmm. and host cleanups and we get other people involved and organizations and every single cleanup is documented on the website. Mm -hmm. Uh, pictures, how much trash we remove. That way we're authentic in what we're saying. We're not just saying, hey, we care, we're mm -hmm. green, we're this. It's like, no, we're actually out here doing it. Yeah. Um, so it's not just the product that speaks, it's you, it's yeah. your brand, it's what you do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, when you host these cleanups, because that's really amazing, do you invite like your customers or your community out? Everyone. So we actually have a mailing list and it's strictly for our cleanups. And we we actually did one with ShipStation two or three years ago, we team up with brands because we want to get more people involved. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, the more the merrier. And we have a whole volunteer list of people that are very passionate about, you know, the environment and what's going on and they come out and join. So uh, before COVID, we, I mean, our cleanups are getting huge. We're pulling hundred people, you know, 120 people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, COVID kind of slowed that down, but now right. we're getting those rolling again. So it's customers, uh, vendors, mm -hmm. uh, and really anyone that wants to come, young or old. Yeah. Well, quick question here. If anyone's interested when you're doing cleanups, do you just post them on your website or on your socials? They go on our, our Instagram, which is FITPPL. And then on our website, um, under our missions tab, mm -hmm. if you go to the bottom, there's a there's a cleanup mailing list mm -hmm. and you can join that. And that gives you um, information on where our next cleanups are. So right now we stick to Austin. The goal is to go more nationwide. Um, and then we have our one piece a day initiative. So if people can't join, mm -hmm. um, they can still join our initiative and try to pick up one piece of trash a day. That's awesome. Yeah. That's that's such a cool way to connect not only with your customer base, mm -hmm. but it's a good way to position your brand and also, you know, grow your community yeah. because people who care about this are going to flock to you. Yeah, exactly. That's that's really amazing. Um Speaking about ShipStation, because we've talked a lot about SKU Vault and ShipStation kind of changing how your workflow has mm -hmm. been going, what ShipStation feature would you say you find yourself using the most and is the most uh, crucial for your business right now? Two of them, one that I don't even, I, it's behind the scenes, is the automation. Mm -hmm. So when there's an order that goes in through our website, it goes straight to ShipStation mm -hmm. and, it's, and then it's it's straight to basically our drop shippers. So everything's sorted on the back end. So there's no... It's seamless. Oh, that's the nice. second one that I use is um, for our wholesale accounts mm -hmm. to put them in man. It's it's technically we're putting them in manually, but it's it's very easy and integrated. Where if I need to ship to Shreveport, Louisiana, Whole Foods, um, I could start typing out, pops up, mm -hmm. auto populates the address, and then ShipStation integrates all your. Uh, products mm -hmm. and I just add what products we need to ship submit that and then that and then that tells our drop shipper where to send where to send product to see that's that's really efficient you know speaking of earlier when you said you know you were on your scooter delivering Terrible. packages to USPS Terrible. when we when we did our first shipment <laughs> to central market I had a I had to rent a, a storage unit to fit all the boxes mm -hmm. and get them sorted out and then put them in, put them in uh, the I, I had an element, put them in the element, and then dry, it was the most inefficient situation you could, you could do. Uh, <laughs> I can't even imagine. I mean, that's perseverance. That's love for your brand. Yeah. You're pushing through. Yeah. That's the grit. Yeah. Um, what, um, what would you say? Uh, we're about to move on to your questions that you guys submitted to us in the registration. Um, but I want to ask, what final advice do you have for people and companies starting out? Um, um, there's a couple it's patience. Mm -hmm. I think we live in this hyper go, go, go. Mm -hmm. We're like, you're seeing unicorns, especially in my space that mm -hmm. may 
it looks like they blew up, you know, mm -hmm. like overnight, but you don't know how long it took them to get to where they're going. Mm -hmm. So it's that patience piece where like you're in the weeds mm -hmm. and you got to stay the course. Mm -hmm. And then the, the perseverance, like mm -hmm. you got to be persistent um, to get in some of the stores that I was able to get into. It took a lot of persistence mm -hmm. to figure out a lot of the bumps and bruises along the way with the inefficiencies with shipping and having no experience in the space took a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, you know, perseverance and persistence. Um, and then the last two, I would say, well, you, you got to really get, you got to really get good at following your gut. Mm -hmm. There's been multiple times where I, my gut was saying, don't do this. And I did it. And then I bit me <laughs> and I was like, I should have listened to my gut. And that comes mm -hmm. with time. Um, and then the last one is, uh, I call it getting good at taking L's, which are losses. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take losses. You're going to take bumps and bruises, but if you learn from it, then it's not a loss, yeah. you know, it's just mm -hmm. a learning experience. As long as it doesn't bury you and tank your business, you know? <laughs> I agree. I think failure is the best thing. Like learning to accept failure as not a lack of, you know, ability or things like that as just a learning experience yeah. and a way to do better is important. It's crucial. And it's something that I don't think we were born to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really great that you've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so now moving on to our amazing audience questions here. Um, let's see. This is some, some about international shipping. Oh there. yeah, do you do you guys do international shipping? International shipping is a little tricky. It, it can all be done through ShipStation really easily, but it cost me so much. It cost us a lot of money mm -hmm. to get product to like we have people requesting to Canada to Australia, mm -hmm. to Belgium, mm -hmm. but the shipping, um, unfortunately, I th it's super expensive. Mm -hmm. And when it leaves the United States, the tracking, you kind of, you start losing tracking. Mm -hmm. um, and so like we, we, I dabbled in international, but people would email and say, where's mm -hmm. the product at? Cause the UPS right. basically stops tracking. Mm -hmm. Once it leaves the stage, just know that's gone. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks, two or three weeks later, you hope it gets there. <laughs> it's, it was so, we were doing international shipping and then mm -hmm. I cut it off because it was causing too much of a headache. Mm -hmm. So I'm still trying to figure out, I think DHL may have good solutions for that, mm -hmm. but I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out too. <laughs> Look, the audience, a DHL integration would be epic. I think there is. <laughs> I, I actually, there I is. signed up with DHL on mm -hmm. there. But definitely DHL is a perfect solution and it's a good mm -hmm. option. Um, Getting to uh, our pre-registration questions, how do you keep accurate track of your inventory on your as your business grows, and when do you know to buy more stock if you're running out? So the U-Vault integration. So a lot of people in the chat, if they have a online business, are probably using BigCommerce, Shopify, or WooCommerce, mm -hmm. and SKUVault shoots into all of those. And mm -hmm. so there's different plugins or different apps that you can use. So my inventory goes into to my store and I have certain pre-limits where it notifies me, hey, you're low on stock. Mm -hmm. And that's when I know that it's time to re-up. And then ShipStation has a really cool feature where you get spit out reports of what products are going out the most mm -hmm. and you can kind of project and, and figure it out from there. Now, I'm still trying to learn because mine has been ebbing and flowing. Like mm -hmm. we went from not getting a lot of orders in the beginning to scaling up to having Whole Foods, which shot it up. So you can have unexpected hits. So mm -hmm. it's hard to project that. But having a SKU vault in integration into your store mm -hmm. helps you keep your eye on inventory. Mm -hmm. And then um, having the report spit out from ShipStation helps a lot. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly inefficient again in the beginning. I literally used to get inventory and just like be like, I think I have this much. And then it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so... And also, I know that overstock was mentioned, but your product is shelf stable, correct? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't expire. So if you do overbuy for you, it's not as crucial as it would be for somebody who is an edible. Yeah, consumable. like I have a friend, she has a yogurt company mm -hmm. and I think she deals a lot more inventory issues than I do. Yeah. Um, and then we, we will jump into the ready to eat space soon. And then mm -hmm. we're gonna have to start dealing with some, some new headaches that are gonna come along with that too. Cause, it is shelf stable, so mm -hmm. I don't run into those kind of issues. But right. I know if, if you have perishable stuff that's expiring very quickly, that's a right. whole other set of headaches that I, don't, I can't even, don't even want to think about right now. That gives me a headache thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not think about yeah. it any longer. Um, the next question is from Umrah. I hope I did not mess up your name, Umrah. 
what efficiencies and products have you used to save money on shipping? The, the big one was um, when I signed up for ShipStation because you set up different accounts through UPS, FedEx, mm -hmm. uh, stamps.com and you get cheaper rates just from doing that. Mm -hmm. So that's that saved me like the most money is mm -hmm. actually having ShipStation set up those different accounts for me right. as part of the sign-up process mm -hmm. and getting those discounted rates on shipping. Yeah. Because shipping's a big cost of mine. We spend a lot of money on shipping. So mm -hmm. trying to find ways to, to cut that down. And I'm looking for new ways to cut down shipping even more. Right. Especially, I know that we have uh, the USPS and U UPS by stamps that we offer greatly discounted rates. And I'm sure that's helped. But it has. There's, it's always a struggle, I'm sure, finding cheaper ways to get things out because yep. obviously you want your profit margin to go higher mm -hmm. and to make things more efficient for your customers yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah that... And priority mail has been a big help too, because you're able to get mm -hmm. to them fast because you're still competing. Like we still, all small businesses still compete with Amazon. Mm -hmm. So even if your product is on Amazon, um, Amazon ships fast and they ship free. So you're bad. You're fighting two battles where you got to ship fast in your ship cheap or free. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that sets up another barrier right there because mm -hmm. that's eating more to, to, to your margins. So for your business, just if anyone is curious out there, do you build in your shipping costs to the product or are you currently uh, just adding shipping when people are checking out on your site? Right now, I keep it at a very, it's like a flat rate, $5 shipping. Mm -hmm. um, and then over a certain threshold of product purchased, they get uh, free shipping. And then we do a subscription model where um, we right now we do charge for shipping on subscription, but I'm thinking about dropping the shipping to add another incentive mm -hmm. free shipping with a subscription. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. You are, people are trained through Amazon's, you know, dominance that they want cheap, fast shipping. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people do like to support small business too. So they mm -hmm. will go to your site and, you know, find a little coupon or whatever and, right. and still support you and, and maybe don't mind paying for the shipping. Right. Um, a question from Mark McCabe here. Any ideas to help grow my market presence? Obviously, we don't know much about his business, but how did you kind of work on increasing your market presence? I know you said Amazon helped. Or yeah. not Amazon, sorry. Whole Foods helped. Yeah. Whole, so retail, can, it depends on what your product is, but retail can be a big win. You mm -hmm. don't make as much money on the retail front, but if you can snag a big retailer, you can get a lot of eyes on your on on the brand mm -hmm. um another thing that we don't you i do not utilize enough and we need to is i know youtube is a really great tool it's mm -hmm. i think it's pretty underutilized so trying to take advantage of video content is really big and i know mm -hmm. on a lot of platforms like the reels and tiktok are getting big so those mm -hmm. could kind of help grow market presence mm -hmm. um i've always thought um and it's hard it's tough for a lot of people but trying to create really sharp content helps a lot too, as mm -hmm. far as like your pictures and the presentation mm -hmm. for social, because you know, that's another way to grow your market right. presence too. And you want that to be a really, really clean also. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, market presence retail right now was like mm -hmm. the big win. Now there's also digital marketing, mm -hmm. but I'm still fighting that battle okay. too. I'm trying to figure that one out. Now your cleanup events, have those kind of helped with your awareness and kind of spreading the word? And as that's, well? that's actually a really good point. So I don't think just coming up with any wishy-washy mission where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm, like it needs to really tie in and have a story behind mm -hmm. it. Like customers are smart and they see through it. Right. I see brands in my space that talk about plastic issues mm -hmm. and they're literally using tons of plastic. And yeah. I'm just like, this is crazy. And and customers see through that. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think tying in a really impactful mission with what you're doing, if that makes sense and works can really help with your market presence too because we've been able to get PR and get eyes on what we're doing through that also. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. I think it's important to just experiment, right? Mm -hmm. As as you've said, just try things. Yeah, you're gonna try a lot of things. You're gonna take some, like don't, I say, take some L's on that. Don't be afraid to fail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, our next question here is from Christy Ambrose. Any tips on making the shipping carrier automation rules more seamless? So do you actually use automation rules with our, uh, through ShipStation? At this no, point? like what, what it, I, I don't know what, like what she's talking about now on the rules. So um, there are rules within ShipStation that'll allow you when an order comes in, where you can say, if order hits X, Y, Z, set carrier package and all of that. 
No, I need to actually, I just learned something new right there. I need oh. to go home and See, we're learning things here. This is what Sip and Zip is all about, <laughs> learning new things. But that actually be help. That would be a helpful um, integration because like, for instance, Whole Foods only accepts FedEx and UPS. Oh, they yeah. don't accept the post office. Mm -hmm. Now I worked it out that my job shipper knows. Right. We only use this shipper uh, sh or carrier for, for that. Right. But that's also a, a really good integration, so. Yeah, and also there are other ones, uh, Christy. There are ones where you can do it by shipping area. So if a shipping is in zone one, two, or three, you can choose which different uh, carrier or service you want. Mm -hmm. So that's something really interesting. Um, and actually I will be posting some more of that on the community here. So we can do a uh, follow-up and I'll post that information. I'll make sure somebody gets in contact I'll with you as well. <laughs> um, what is the best way to move older items without taking a loss? And this is from Anthony. Really, the, honestly, the best, but this depends if you have a decent sized mailing list, but if you need to get older stuff out, like we need to get rid of some of our older packaging, uh, we run a pretty pretty nice sell on our, through our mailing list. And right. those are, and another, another really, um, good avenue that's growing is through SMS, through texting, um, which is another uh, avenue we're going to start integrating, but those have good conversion rates too. So that's a double-edged sword because you do need to build your email up. So right. if you're a smaller business, with a lot of a big email mm -hmm. list, um, a really great way to do this is try to find, for me, like we would do the Austin Marathon, the 3N Marathon, mm -hmm. and um the, the statesman and usually you pay like 500 bucks for a booth right um and then you set up there and then you can sell old product there too so i'd clear out a lot of product that needed to go through events also bring that there and just start running sales at the events yeah that's that works also so if you have a small email list mm -hmm. and you and you don't want to take a huge loss try to find an event that fits your whatever product you have mm -hmm. and um and, and, and then if you don't if you don't have money to, to do the event one thing I did was I, I have a lot of, uh, I have the skill, I can do video, mm -hmm. video editing. So I'd, I'd approach the marathons and say, I'll shoot a, I'll shoot a recap video mm -hmm. of the marathon if you give me a free booth. That's awesome. So I would get a free booth and then I would give them content and return the next day when I'd shoot the marathon. When I was like mm -hmm. really in the beginning trying to figure out ways to be scrappy. That's such a good idea and it, to use your skill sets yeah. uh, for making events. And obviously here we definitely do love events mm -hmm. as we say. Um, and speaking about this, this question, because you and I had talked previously that you were telling me that when you changed packaging, that you ran sales, correct? Because mm -hmm. I know that you were changing up your packaging yeah. and, um, that's another way I'm sure. Yeah. Like we had, I brought some old stuff, oh, but like, yeah. we had like, I mean, it was brutally bare back in the oh, day. Man. You want I don't know if everyone can see that. <laughs> it was really bare and, mm -hmm. and, you know, we have the newer stuff. Now this is like four or five years old. And then we have our newer. So I want to get this on the shelf. This is our yeah. newer one. And I want to get it on the shelf. So I want to mm -hmm. get our other stuff out. So we'll probably start running some sales on the on the older stuff just to get it cleared out. Right. Yeah. That's that's such a good idea too. And it helps you kind of evolve and grow mm -hmm. within uh, what you're doing. Uh, our next question here is from John. And he asks, what is the cheapest and most effective methods for inventory tracking for small businesses that plan to scale soon. Mm. So that also depends on what your business is, but the cheapest way for, for me, what, what was the best way was to find a, try to find a drop shipper, mm -hmm. especially a smaller one that you can have really open lines of communication right. with. And if they're smart, they'll be using SKU vault so mm -hmm. you can manage that inventory, but you're able to, scale like that if you need to because mm -hmm. if you're trying to scale on your shipping it yourself you got to get mm -hmm. a warehouse you got to get all this expensive equipment which can be done at, if the time is right but in the beginning when you're small if you can find a drop shipper which there's there's a ton have them integrate that skew vault and then like for me i was able to scale like when whole foods was like mm -hmm. we're gonna pick it up i was like we, I need to scale quickly. Well, I was able to do that because I had that relationship with that with right. our drop shipper. Mm -hmm. They had the skew vault and stuff already uh, integrated. So we were able to scale as a small business, scale it quickly. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice, depending on what your business is, mm -hmm. is, to, is to try to work a relationship with a, with a drop shipper right. that you can have 
really good lines of communications, you know, in case things come up. Right. So for anyone curious out here, just without spilling too many secrets, how did you find uh, your dropshipper? Like, how did you just do searches of local ones or? So I would actually get a lot of emails mm -hmm. from companies that found us. So there's big ones out there mm -hmm. that um, sometimes will luckily email you. And then it's a quick Google, sh uh, quick Google search, especially mm -hmm. with the explosion of e-commerce yeah. over COVID, there was a much, there was a huge need for that. I just, I actually got really lucky where, you know, my co-packer that I use in, in Dallas, mm -hmm. um, I have a really good relationship with them also. And mm -hmm. they were like, Hey, we're actually opening up a drop shipping wing to what we're doing. <laughs> and it was right at the time where I was like, like the stars just align. I was like, yes, mm -hmm. I need that. And so I got kind of lucky and it kind of integrated in easily, mm -hmm. but it's really just a quick Google search away and just interview them, see how all their stuff works. Mm -hmm. And then um, just, you know, make sure you vet. But that's also really cool because earlier we were talking about authenticity and it's very clear throughout your brand. You make a mis mission to support small and yeah. also to make sure that you're aware of, you know, who you're getting in bed with. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, I do that to a fault where I'm almost involved in every single respect. <laughs> Where I need to get better at delegating, but I, mm -hmm. I like to have the personal relationships with anyone that I work with vendor wise or, um, and you know, I, I take a lot of appreciation, especially starting out small when they take a risk on you and then to, to kind of pay that back by growing your business and, and, and making it fruitful for them too. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. It's symbiotic relationships. Yeah. So you both help each other. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's kind of a cool, um, a cool thing to kind of tout. Um, question here is from Kyle. Oh, did I just ask that? Okay, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, and what's the greatest tool that has allowed you to scale and grow your small business? I know that you've been talking a lot about us, but what tool would you say has helped you most? Um, Flavio was a big one. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they want like specific like right. companies and tools. Clavio was a big one. So mm -hmm. Clavio is an email, email marketing platform. I was using a different one before. I won't say what it is because I don't want like to sound yeah. like I'm trashing people, <laughs> but it was like very like, it, it just, it, it wasn't like a robust system. So Clavio was huge where they just, they really put a lot of data and, and they, they, they really embody everything you need in an e-commerce business. So Clavio is a big one. And then for SEO, for SEO, I used a company called The Hoth out of Florida, mm -hmm. and they've been phenomenal. Where like I, I struggled so hard trying to get the SEO aspect figured out. And The Hoth, you can scale your budget from mm -hmm. five hundred bucks to fifty thousand, and and they do all the backlinking. Uh, they'll write blogs for you. They do all the things you need to actually build successful SEO. Mm -hmm. it takes patience and time, but it it's done right. And I've seen that pay off too. So those were two really big tools. And then the third one obviously was like ship station. Like I just, mm -hmm. I was in such a inefficient, bad place with mm -hmm. how to scale things. And that was a big stressor of mine. I was like, how all this stuff needs to get done and how do I integrate this? Mm -hmm. So those are probably the three big tools off the top of my head. Uh, please say the num name of his company and hold up the product on the table. It is very small. You <laughs> go ahead and get all camera? close up. Where's the camera? Is that it right there? <laughs> it is Fit People, and that is his packaging. Um, F I T P P L. Perfect. And speaking of that, where can people find you? Um, so, our website, everything is on brand F I T P P L. So, our website, fitpeople.com, Instagram, fitpeople.com. YouTube, which we're going to start um, doing a lot of recipe videos on our mm -hmm. YouTube, so that'd be fun to follow. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in the Southwest region of Whole Foods, so that's Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, we're in Whole Foods, uh, and we're working on more stores um, throughout the United States. So we'll start popping up in more places. That's amazing. And again, the we just put in that website there and you can get on his mailing list for the beach cleanups. Yeah, for all that stuff. We actually yeah. do them on the beach too. We were in oh, San Diego yeah. a couple of years ago, did, on, did one on the beach, did one in Costa Rica. Oh, so we're trying to move them all over the place. That's so cool. So if you're joining us from around around the country or around the world, you could possibly join a future cleanup. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's so cool. Um, and we have more products on the way too. So we'll have mm -hmm. a more broad... Um, 
lineup of products coming out too for kind of whatever whatever aspect of your lifestyle you need, whether it's sleep, energy, all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, so not just for like protein. And yeah, we have more. Lot. Yeah, we have more stuff coming out. So oh, nice. it should be a lot of stuff popping out this year. That would be really nice to have something like that before bed instead yeah. of, you know, having to take like sleeping. Eight yeah, eight yeah, that's like, actually yeah. exactly what we're working on. Oh, something that's, that's going to be a non like uh, habit forming sleep aid, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's so cool, and it's a good way to kind of expand into mm -hmm. the whole wellness. Thing. Yeah, because people need different things. Like, not everyone's gonna need, you know, maybe our current product offering then it may not be for everyone. So we we want to mm -hmm. make sure that we have something for everyone. Yeah, definitely. You want to make sure that everybody's included. I do see some amazing questions in, uh, in our chat and just want to reiterate that we will be uh, taking a look at all of these amazing questions and we will be posting something in the coming week on the community on community.shipstation.com with a little bit more information from our amazing panelists here, Patrick. And uh, actually, it looks like we might be just a uh, about out of time here. So unfortunately, we are out of our time. But I want to thank you again to our amazing guest, Patrick, for joining us today. Next time you need protein powder and coming soon, sleep. Yeah, lots of stuff. <laughs> um, coming out too. So if you're a little tired, yeah, you're coming out. Check out uh, Fit People. And uh, before we go, I would like to announce the winner of our Fit People giveaway. And the lucky Windsor is Mackenzie Scott. So congratulations. We will reach out to you and email you to get the information that we need. Um, if you didn't win, don't worry. We are actually going to be sending out an email tomorrow with some more information for you guys and a $5 Grubhub credit on us. So um, that will be exciting. So also, another announcement and housekeeping here. Before we go, we do have something exciting to announce. ShipStation will be rolling out our Refer a Friend program. Our community of shippers is growing every day. And so you can let your friends know on the secret of how you're getting ship done, like Patrick. Um, please refer your fellow business owners to ShipStation and you'll get a $30 as a thank you. So to learn more about that, you can go to shipstation.com forward slash refer hyphen, a hyphen, friend, and let's get shipping together. Um, so again, if you have any questions or you want to uh, reach out to us to be nominated as a highlighted user, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, or you can email the events team at events at shipstation.com. We will see you all next time. And don't forget to learn more about fit people at fitpeople.com. Thank you guys.